Good afternoon, it's John Hurst here with a presentation that was intended to be given at the British Constitution Group conference in Telford about a month ago. There wasn't time so I'm doing it from home now. It's about council tax, it's about the possibility that you may not be aware of that you can withhold council tax for various reasons completely lawfully. It's called Starve the Beast. First of all, there's a historical overview. What I'm going to do is present each slide between and give a short commentary on it. And if you want detailed information, you can read the slide. So I suggest you first watch the video through from beginning to end and then work through the slides. The historical overview is that British history has got a long tradition of people withholding taxes because nothing else upsets tyrannical rulers. There's a gentleman called John Hampden. He was an English parliamentarian. He was one of the legal figures involving challenge authority Charles I and a good man in my opinion. The issue that he chose was ship money, which was a tax of medieval origin, which normally only applied to the counties joining the sea. And King Charles I wanted more money, so he arbitrarily decided it would apply elsewhere, and John Hampton objected. Hampden, if you choose to research it, features in a lot of judgments, a lot of the early judgments that affirm the common law. And the issue is that the Crown can't just tax arbitrarily, it has to be with consent of Parliament. This was settled, or it was thought to have been settled, in a measure called the Petition of Right, which is a statute in force, if you can look it up on legislation.gov.uk, um, and it's got restrictions on the non-parliamentary taxation. Now, we're going to talk about the council tax later, and that is an example of non-parliamentary taxation, and, and in my opinion, there's a very dubious legal validity. Here's the Petition of Right. If you choose to look it up on legislation.gov.uk, you'll find it. It's a statute in force. The important bit is the subject should not be compelled to contribute to any tax or tallage not set by common consent in Parliament. It's not individual consent, it's common consent in Parliament. I know free men have a different view of the law related to taxation, but I was trained in the mainstream and my understanding is Parliament consent, then, then you can't really argue with the tax. Not everybody agrees, of course, and there were poll tax riots, you may recall, about 20 years ago, and the poll tax riots led to a rushed programme of reform which produced the current council tax regime, and because it was rushed, errors were made. Here's the Act in question, the Local Government Act, uh, Local Government Finance Act 1992, an act to provide for certain local authorities to levy and collect a new tax. The problem is the local authority also sets the figure each year, so then there's no requirement for the locals to agree to it. The council just tax regardless of whatever figure they, they choose. There are discounts to council tax. Here's a Wikipedia article if you were to look it up. Low occupancy, disabled occupancy, discretionary reductions um, may apply to you, but the most important one is Section 13A. Look this up, you'll find it's a statute in force, and I will read it out. Bringing authorities' power to reduce the amount of tax payable. Where a person is liable to pay council tax in respect of any chargeable dwelling, and any day, the billing authority for the area in which the dwelling is situated may reduce the amount which is liable to pay as respect to the dwelling and the day to such extent as it thinks fit. The power under subsection 1 above includes the power to reduce the amount to nil. So that's the insight I'd like you to take away with you. The power under subsection 1 may be exercised in relation to particular cases by determining a class of case in which liability is reduced. So if you prove the point that you're a person entitled and others are entitled, then they can enjoy the benefit of having their council tax reduced to nil may reduce the amount which is liable to pay as respects the dwelling. A lot of you, when you hear the word may, you, you might think, oh no, of course they won't exercise their discretion in our favour. But there's a legal argument, it's an example where legalese doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as English. This issue of council tax was tested in 2006. Again, you can look this up, the local ombudsman have got a website. And notice it says maladministration causing injustice. Here's an account of the investigation given by the ombudsman. Basically, Red Car Council refused to acknowledge the lady's right to uh, have a discount and blanked her completely, and they were told off by the Ombudsman. The Ombudsman said, I find the council starts to be inexplicable and clearly maladministration. The Ombudsman set rules by which the council must consider applications each time. Now, here's a judgment, which some of you may have seen before. A short name is ex parte liberty. This is about the meaning of the word may in a statute and how to correctly interpret the word may. If you look at the bottom of the screen... The word may is an enabling word empowering the court of summary jurisdiction to give effect to the rights of the accused, which accordingly the court is bound to do. So courts exercise judicial functions. A council, when it's deciding whether to give you a discount of council tax, is exercising a quasi-judicial function. And what that means is it's got some of the features of a court and all. And the first thing is that the council officials, when they're considering your application, is they've got to act according to law, not opinion. Here's another part from the liberty judgment. The words may have a compulsory force where the thing to be done is for the public benefit or the advancement of public justice. So if you've got a good reason for asking for a discount, uh, Liberty says the local authority have got to consider it. Here's another part from the Liberty judgment. If the object for which a power is conferred is for the purpose of enforcing a right, there may be a duty cast on the donor of the power to exercise for the benefit of those who have the right when required on their behalf. So in other words, when you ask for a right to be exercised, the council have got to do something about it. As I say, I refer you back to the red car, the ombudsman judgment. That's what went wrong, and the, the ombudsman put them right. 
when you apply to the council, it's prized of individuals, isn't it? And it has a legal personality. But uh, I refer you to this measure, which again is on legislation.gov.uk in force. Local Government Act 1888, Section 79, all duties and liabilities of the inhabitants of the county should come and be duties and liabilities of the council of such a county. So the council has the same legal responsibilities as an individual. So let's consider some lawful reasons to withhold council tax. They're in no particular order, and they may not suit you, but at least one of these will appeal to you. Chapter 61 of Magna Carta. I refer you to my videos on YouTube, uh, Magna Carta to the Rescue by John Hurst. A uh, Baron's Committee was lawfully formed in, in 2001. Serve notice on the Queen that should re resist further integration with the EU and rule according to her coronation oath, which basically means according to Magna Carta 1215 and the Declaration of Rights. She didn't, so we've been in lawful rebellion since then. If you want a detailed account, look at the Magna Carta Society blog. Here's a reason, the prohibition on the finance of terrorism contained in the Terrorism Act 2000. Again, you can Google that. The government blatantly support terrorists in foreign countries, Syria, for example, but cutting Christians' heads off, and we're paying for it. And a portion of council tax goes to central government. If nothing else, any VAT they have to pay goes to central funds. Here's another reason, the prohibition on the allegiance to foreign potentates contained in the Bill of Rights, which infringed by cooperation with the European and the United Nations. Most councils, again, blatantly have a European cooperation and United Nations cooperation as part of their remit, or they, they do, but they shouldn't. For those that are aware of Agenda 21 and what it means, it's not good. And I say it's ground for discount to council tax, you shouldn't be paying for it. Chemtrails, well, you know, individual polluters at ground level dealt with by local authorities. What about polluters above our heads? Here's one that I think is really significant. Council officials, in my experience, are terrified by the prospect of people refusing to pay taxes because their wages and pensions suddenly are in question, aren't they? Uh, it's the Bradbury Pound. I would argue on good legal authority that local authorities shouldn't be taxing us to run their local services. They should be applying to the Treasury for lawful money under the Bradbury Pound system, which is what they did in the past, and they've only stopped since the Rothschilds and central banks in 1911 took over the system. So local authorities could tomorrow apply to the Treasury for money to run their funds. But a lot of their um, funding is in fact from central authority and council tax is i understand only a small proportion something like 20 percent here's another reason subversion by common purpose you find councils behave strangely and come to the wrong decision and you suspect that they've been subverted well why pay your tax why pay for it here's another topical rotherham failure by police and social service to protect children portions of your council tax bill goes to police forces and if you're not happy with the way they're performing well you should be able to argue that again why should you pay for it Failure to control electromagnetic radiation. Local authorities give planning permission to mobile phone masks willy nilly, don't they? With a result, we're swamped with radiation. In summary, if you've got a lawful reason for challenging uh, council tax, a good reason, I should say, you've got a lawful authority to do it under Section 13A. I commend it to you as an option to correct some of the abuses that we've suffered from in recent years. Thank you very much.